What's up guys? Mr. Bevel here today. We're going to jump into shielding gases. What does that mean to us as welders? Well here at Drake we have three processes we teach that involve shielding gases. We have the TIG process, the MIG process, and the flux flow process. So what is shielding gas? What does it do? For example here we have a TIG torch with some tungsten coming out of it. It's got an arc created that's going down to the base material. So what that shielding gas does is it creates an environment, a controlled environment, a bubble or a little cloud if you would, that keeps all impurities from getting in to this weld pool until that weld pool can cool off. So as we're welding, that little bubble moves along with us as it comes out of the gun or the tick torch and keeps that shielded and protected. So it has certain aspects, certain elements to this gases that help protect that until it cools off. That being said, we have several different types of shielding gas, and we'll go through different mixes in a minute, but we have argon, it's one of our most popular, CO2, which is carbon dioxide, helium, oxygen, and even nitrogen used for purging. We're going to jump into purging a little bit more too. So, whenever we set up our machine, and we're actually going to show you guys how to set up a flow meter and a regulator on the machine, there's some different things we can do. We have something called the gas flow rate, which is how much gas we're, we're putting through that machine on top of our well. Because it's possible to have not enough shielding gas, it's very possible to have too much shielding gas without the proper setup. So this can change, but this is very typical for in the shop, what we teach here at Drake. The gas flow rate would be 10 to 35 CFH. CFH stands for cubic feet per hour. You need to know that as a welder, there's a giant difference between cubic feet per hour and pounds per square inch, PSI. Because what we do is we actually measure the volume of the bottle, how much is in this bottle, by PSI. But how much we're using out of that as, as a time and a gas flow rate, you're measuring the CFH. Two totally different things. So when we know the difference in those, that's a good starting point while we're here in the shop. But to give you an example, if we were to be in a windy application, say we're outside on top of a building, wind started gusting, we might have to turn that gas flow rate up to get more gas coverage on our well. We can have too much gas coverage. We can be in a shop in a very controlled environment, not a lot going on, and we can have that thing cranked up 50, 60 CFH, and it actually can blow so hard that it creates a turbulence, actually blows our gas off that well and defeats the purpose that it longer shields it. So we want to make sure we dial in the gas flow rate right the right way, and we're going to show you guys how to do that here in a minute. We also have something called a post flow and a pre flow. The pre flow this is how long it lets gas come out at this gas flow rate before the arc is established. So that means before we strike up on that metal, that's how much gas is going to come out. So why would we need that? Well, the reason we would need that is to protect our tungsten if we're TIG welding, and it also protects our wire when we're MIG welding, and it keeps that control environment started before we actually create an arc. That way we don't start a weld with some impurities and then get our shielding. We already have everything shielded before we start the weld. Pre-flow is before the arc, pre-post-flow is how long it lasts after the arc is extinguished. Same thing, we want to be able to protect that tub so we're TIG welding or protect that big wire when we get done welding. Also, when you finish a weld, we want to keep our gun. We just welded this T-joint. We want to keep our gun at the, on that weld for just a minute. Even though we've extinguished the arc, we want to keep that shielding gas on it to protect it until it cools down, which is another advantage of having a post-flow. And we're going to show you guys how to set that up here in a minute. So, you got to have a pre flow before the arc, post flow after the arc, and we have the whole gas flow rate while we're welding. Now, let's talk about purge for a minute. So, nitrogen is a very popular purge gas, which we can also purge with any of the shielding gases, but nitrogen is a cheaper version. So, we typically think about purging when we talk about pipe welding, but it can be used in other, other ways. What purging is, is where we take a pipe like this. We cap this pipe off to where nothing can escape, and we pipe in gas, chilling gas. What that does is it protects the weld on the inside, the root weld, as we make that weld through there. So instead of just welding on the outside of this pipe, we get chilling from the outside, we also get chilling from the inside with the purge gas. Same thing, we have a gas flow rate set for it, depending on how big our pipe is and what material our pipe is. So that's something you need to know is what a purge is. When you take a pipe blast, we'll definitely show you guys how to set that up. Very popular in the stainless pipe. We get into some exotics like titanium, and canal, copper nickel stuff. So you really want to know what a purge is when you come to pipe holder. 
can also be used when it's something as simple as a uh, butt joint, V groove, or square groove. Same thing if we need to protect that well on the back side for some reason. So now we'll talk about that stuff. Let's jump into the different mixes of gas. Kind of create a little bit of room on the board here. But we can have a mix, and we'll talk about gas comes to our welding, tip welding first. Not as many mixes to tip welding. Typically, we weld 100% argon on most applications of tea. That is probably the number one way we would set that up. It's very possible to also weld 100% helium. You might want to put a side note, this is used heavily in the DC aluminum category. Whenever we weld with DC helium, uh, it makes that weld pull a lot hotter, so we get a lot more penetrating action. And when we're welding DC aluminum, it's only a thick material, so we've got to be able to penetrate a little bit more. So we weld 100% argon, we weld 100% helium, and we can weld a mix of these two. Now you never weld with CO2 or oxygen or nitrogen when it comes to TIG welding. You can purge with that stuff, but you never actually use it for your, your parent shielding gas. So that's the two main ones when it comes to TIG welding. So we're going to jump in the big because it's got a whole bunch of different mixes. Now with me, you can't use 100% argon because it doesn't get hot, it doesn't, uh, or it's too hot and causes some problems. But we can use 100% CO2. Now, to give you an idea before we get to different mixes, argon makes that weld bubble pretty hot. So argon is hotter and CO2 is cooler. Not by much, but it will make an effect on our weld bubble. That being said, we can have different mixes of argon and CO2 together. We can have a very popular mix, probably the most popular mix, 75% argon and 25% CO2. Very popular mix because it's uh, got enough argon to make a, a very hot weld, but the CO2 is cheaper, so it's a very cost-effective gas mix. But we can have 95.5, 90.10, 90.15, a 20 the list goes on and on. 75, 25 is the lowest amount of argon that I've personally seen, but it's possible, I guess, that they make a different mix. Now, we can also have a mix of oxygen when it comes to big welding. Very popular mix, the 98% argon and 2% oxygen. Again, yeah, oxygen is real cheap, not as clean as CO2, so it has some disadvantages to it. And then we also have something called tri-mix. Tri means three, so we can actually mix three different elements together. And with the big welding process, I'm going to put a side note of this. Um, stainless steel uses a tri-mix, which is a mixture of argon, Helium and CO2. So that's that's a rare mix there, more expensive mix, very possible to get to the specialty metals, titanium, stainless steel, that stuff has to be one of the tri-mix to get the right amount of mix for the right heat for that metal. So we're talking about shielding gas, we know what a pre-flow is or post-flow, we know what the shielding gas does, we have an idea of the different mixes. Now when we start talking about the different modes of transfer with me, which we'll get into in the later module, it'll explain why we use these different mixes. But just know we have different mixes where we'll show you guys how to set those up, how to set the regulators and the flow meters up in the next video. Appreciate it guys.